Hey guys, Rob here. So today we're out at the range and uh, we're gonna do an unboxing and a demonstration video. So stay tuned. All right, so before we get into today's video, I just wanna say that a company called CV Life had reached out to me and offered me a scope to test out for the channel here. And uh, we're gonna do that today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbox it. I'll go over all of its uh, features and uh, we'll look through it and just run through it together. And then after, I'm actually gonna mount it on one of my air rifles and we'll do some sighting in. So as I mentioned in the last video, uh, I was in the middle of taking my hunter safety course and I already completed that, I passed it. So now all I have to do is uh, do a field day, which is like a, about a six hour roughly uh, class outdoors that I have to take. And um, we should be good to go for turkey hunting. So putting together a video like this, I think is gonna be beneficial for a couple of people out there that maybe don't know how to mount a scope or sight it in or just really anything about scopes. So I'm gonna kind of go through everything and uh, share uh, with you guys all the stuff that I know so far. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get to it. I gotta get the target and everything put out down range. And then we're gonna jump into this unboxing. Let's go. All right, so here we have the actual scope and it comes in a, uh, like a standard scope box here, all black. And inside, let me move up closer. Inside we do have the scope here. And it's got some good uh, foam padding on it. And it does come in this plastic sleeve. You're gonna get uh, some scope rings to go with it. Two scope rings there. Got a cleaning cloth. You got a couple tools, a couple of Allen wrenches, some spare uh, screws it looks like. And then you're gonna have your uh, manual here. And that's about it in the box. So let's go over the scope itself. Let's pull it out of this. All right, so it does have uh, scope caps on here and uh, they flip up, locking pretty tight. But uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. Um, it feels solid so you do have a uh, adjustable objective here in the front the scope is a three to nine by 40 and like I said it does have an, an uh, adjustable objective up here in the front so you just spin this right here and that right there is pretty much your focus out to whatever distance so if you're looking out at 100 yards you adjust this to 100 yards and that makes it nice and crisp um, and then the scope caps here it's got these covers on here which is pretty nice because then you can set your zero and cover it and not have to worry about your scope getting bumped and then throws off your zero. So those unscrew there and you got some turrets at the top. So you got a, a elevation turret at the top and then a windage turret on the side here. So if you listen here, one of the things I like to look for in a, in a good scope is uh, the turrets. You know, how do they sound? Are they loud clicks when you, when you adjust it? And also too, uh, do you feel those clicks every time you turn it? So I'm gonna try to stop talking here and then let you guys listen. So I hope you guys were able to hear that. Very loud audible clicks, um, very positive clicks. You can definitely feel that there. So that is a huge plus. If I pick up a scope, and it's mushy and it's just like you can barely hear it, you can barely feel it. In my opinion, it's junk. Um, so yeah, it's got that feature on here and then you have your magnification right here on the back and this right here will go all up to nine power and uh, it's pretty stiff, which is good because uh, it just, it feels solid and you know, your magnification is not gonna get thrown off. And that is important because um, with a scope like this, this is a second, uh, focal plane scope and what that means is that when you adjust your magnification on the scope uh, It's actually moving like the image towards you and the the crosshair stays where it is so When you're zeroing your scope if it's a second focal plane You want to make sure that you leave your magnification alone after you set your zero Don't mess with the magnification because if you change it at all, it's gonna throw off your zero so just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty good scope. The glass is really clear. Um, I have a special device here that I'm actually gonna set up on the scope that's gonna allow you guys to see through the scope tube and see what I'm seeing. So we're gonna put that on and uh, we're gonna look down range and I'll show you guys some more of the features of this here scope. All right, so I got my 
scope mount mounted up onto the actual scope itself and I have my phone up on here so you guys can actually see what the scope is looking at right now and um, just give you guys another look here all right so with the magnification still set to nine I'm gonna take this thing all the way out to 400 yards so we could try to see the mirage off the ground If you don't know what the mirage is, it's like that glowing effect. It kind of looks like the, the ground is like, there's like a gas coming off of it. You guys see that there right above the crosshair, how it looks like it's swaying. Well, that's the heat coming off the ground. And um, I'm gonna adjust the objective again to, this thing goes from 10 yards, 50, 75, 100, 200 yards, and then infinity. So we're gonna set it to infinity and see how we're looking there. So pretty clear on the glass. Uh, that's helpful because when you're shooting out long range like that, you can use the mirage and look at the direction that it's moving to get an idea on what the winds are down range. So, so now you can make your adjustments for your shot as far as windage goes. Uh, you guys can see it's pretty windy out here today. So uh, it's good. It's, it's good to have glass where you can actually see that effect. All right, guys, so I showed you guys how everything looks through the scope there. Uh, I took the uh, camera out now, and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the second portion of this here video, and that's gonna be me mounting the scope to one of my air rifles, and then we're gonna actually uh, sight it in, zero it in. All right, so I have the scope rings on the actual scope itself, and uh, it's not tight, it's just finger snug. And when you guys are putting on your scope rings, if it's got like two screw options on either side, uh, just make sure you go in a cross pattern and by hand, very loose on both sides. And then that way, once you get the scope on the actual rifle itself, you can still make some small adjustments. Another thing is, you're gonna after you get everything kind of just like snugged up, you're gonna want to uh, look through your scope and make sure your crosshairs are perfectly straight and li in line with the gun. The gun's got to be straight and the crosshairs got to be straight. Otherwise, when you shoot, your, your zero is always going to be off. And once I get that correct, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten everything down. Start torquing these down. You don't want to go tight with this. You should actually be using like a torque screwdriver but if you do it by hand just get it pretty snug you don't have to crank down because what will happen is you'll actually damage the scope itself if you go too tight with this just go in that X pattern and just do a little at a time all right we got that scope mounted on there and it's looking really good I really like that and I forgot to mention that this is a very, very affordable option, guys. This scope is only running about 80 bucks. And um, I think for the price and everything, and like I said, with the turrets and stuff, that's really important because uh, I do a lot of adjustments with my turrets. And uh, I think it's a very affordable scope for what you're getting. All right, so uh, before we start shooting here, the ammo I'm using is special ammo. This is uh, Nielsen, Nielsen Specialty Ammo, NSA slugs. Uh, I don't shoot pellets out of this gun just because these slugs seem to shoot a lot better. I can group a lot much nicer with these and um, they have a really good BC, which is a ballistic coefficient. 
I'm gonna run these out of a magazine because this gun does come so you can run magazines. Now, if you guys are wondering what kind of power these slugs are putting out with this tune that I have on here, um, I'll go through and look to see. Yeah, I take notes on all my rifles. I have, they all have their own uh, book. That way I can go back and look at whatever maintenance I did or any information as far as velocities for different slugs or pellets. Uh, I have it all there written down. So these right here, these slugs here, hollow points. These are going an average of 906 feet per second. And the amount of energy that they're uh, producing from the muzzle is 52.87 foot pounds, which is, it's, that's a lot. That's definitely a lot. And uh, out to 200 yards, shooting these same slugs, we have a uh, uh, energy of 31 foot pounds at 200 yards. So that's still plenty of power to go through three quarter inch plywood, um, which is what they say is considered lethal, just so you guys know. So yeah, so 50 foot pounds from the muzzle here and um, it's a pretty powerful, quiet air gun. So let's get this loaded up and then uh, we're gonna go over these here turrets. Here we go, all loaded up. All right, so we got two turrets on the scope here as we talked about earlier in the video. Take these caps off of here since we're gonna be doing adjustments. So the top turret is gonna be your elevation, so up and down, and then your side turret over here on the right is gonna be your windage, so left or right. Um, so we're right now I'm just leaving the, the scope exactly the way it is that I got it uh, shipped, and we're gonna take a cider shot at 25, 30 yards, and just see where we end up on paper. And then from there we'll make our adjustments, and I'll talk you guys through all of that through the, uh, the scope cam that we're gonna put on. Hold for center here. Take the safety off. All right, so it went way low. So let's go ahead and adjust our elevation, the top. Take another shot. Right on. Take another shot. Filling the gun back up. Pressure was starting to drop off. So I think I'm just gonna leave it actually just tethered to the rifle for now and continue uh, our shooting. All right, so we've been shooting 50 yards on paper and uh, I think it's time to give out my spinner targets to try. So we got like a larger one in the middle and then a smaller and then another smaller one on the end. Largest is uh, I think three inches. So. Uh, We'll uh, try to shoot that a couple times and uh, just see if we can get them to, to swing. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. I uh, definitely had a lot of fun shooting out here today and, uh, and shooting this here rifle. This is one that has been put away for quite a while. So it's nice uh, being able to bring it back out and swap the scope and everything on it. Uh, but yeah, looks like it might start storming here pretty soon. So I'm gonna wrap this one up, guys. If y'all thought the video was helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up for me as always, and uh, subscribe if you're new, and uh, share the video with somebody. Till next time, guys, appreciate it. See you later, peace.